We want you all to stand to your feet as we get ready to receive Apostle Gino Jennings of the First Church. Hallelujah. there is no God but one. Amen. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. There is no God greater than him. Amen. He is God alone. He have no partners. We associate none to be with God. He is the master of creation. He made heavens and earth by himself with himself, for himself. God have no equals, and God have no rivals. <clears throat> to Bishop Williams and to all the ministers, we're glad for the invitation to be here. My first time in Augusta. And I'm pretty sure it won't be my last time here, God willing. To, uh, to all of the visitors, <clears throat> those I can see and those I can't see, and to, to many brothers and sisters here from First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, and television viewers and social media viewers. And it is good for us to be here. Amen. Take the time out and spar with you a little bit. <laughs> My purpose is to call your attention to what the Bible says. I didn't come to get your money, but I come to get your soul. Churches have turned against the Bible more than for the Bible. Preachers today have played church. Religion has played church. The preachers have took your money, and the only thing you got in return is a bunch of lies and games and entertainment and amusement. Anyone that has ever heard of us know, one, I don't preach for money. I don't get a speaker salary or offering anywhere I go. So I can kill you as hard as I want. <laughs> I didn't come to make friends with nobody. We come to preach the word of God, and you got two places to choose. From pulpit down is either heaven or hell. There is no in between. There is no middleman. This is the most dangerous position of the church. Because all these fellas got to give an account to God for what they tell everybody. And if anybody die with the wrong information on them, blood is on their hands. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? God only have one church. Now, I came down here sick. I've been sick for the past two weeks. Burning up with fever off and on. I was in Sacramento, California last week, and in two days' time, we baptized 102 souls in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> two weeks before that, we were in Houston, Texas. 156 souls went down in two days in the name of the Lord Jesus. Got a chance to talk to some visiting ministers here that came up from Florida and some from Macon. Want to be baptized the right way in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. So no man can be the founder of the church. 
I am not the founder of the church. Nobody's pastor is the founder of the church. You only have one church, and this building is not the church. Church is those that have repented of their sins and were baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and then follow the doctrine of the apostles. Now, whatever Jesus gave his apostles, that's supposed to be the same thing in your church. Are you listening to the old man? The apostles didn't have no women preachers. Neither do we. Amen. Amen. Peter was a married man. Peter was a married man, but his wife wasn't called the first lady. Neither are ours. Are you listening to the old man? The apostles preached against the will of the flesh. So they didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't gamble, wasn't living together, not married. Am I right, I said? Church and tradition are two different things. A lot of seminary school information have infiltrated church. There's more school information in church than Bible information. Most of the stuff that people are jumping and shouting over is not in the Bible. It's just in some seminary school. You see, school don't make preachers. Holy Ghost make preachers. The way you find whether a preacher is made by the Holy Ghost, evaluate all his teaching with that Bible. If he deviates from the Bible, I don't care if he scream like James Brown and moonwalk like Michael Jackson. He deviate from that Bible. He don't represent Christ. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? All right, let's get your recipe books open. Let us all walk by the same rule. Amen. Let us all walk. That's what I want to work on today because every church in Augusta is different. That's right. And no need to be a fool. Jesus only had one church, so all you Augusta preachers supposed to have the same thing. That's right. I don't care if you're white as snow, black at the street, yellow as butter, or clear as water. Amen. If Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, who gave you the right to be different from the Bible? That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Go ahead. The Bible have rules. Doctrine, yes, laws yes. to govern God's people. And Holy Ghost rules today is not governing the church, is the preacher's imagination, feelings, personal views, philosophy, yes. ideology, yes. supposition, safe things that make you feel good. I don't go nowhere to make nobody feel good. We come to preach the word of God regardless to who like it or who don't like it. You see, most men preach and they're scared to hurt your feelings. We are running your feelings out of your body. Are you listening? Everything in the pulpit might as well judge themselves also. This ain't a gospel for you only. It's for you and them up here. Because do you know if you give people information and they die with it and it's wrong, 
The preacher going to go to hell for telling them? That's right. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. This preaching business is sincere business. It's not that T.D. Jakes trash. Or that Creflo old dollar trash. No, this is judgment work. You're going to give an account to God for the deeds done in your body. You beer guzzling Christians. You fornicating loving Christians. Are you listening? Amen. You cigarette sucking, church going, bed hopping Christians. You ankle chair, ankle chain, prostitute looking Christians. You fake hair wearing Christians. Makeup wearing Christians. Homosexual Christians. I want to soak you a little. You can shout next week. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. All right. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And we'll start reading at verse 15. All right, let's go to work. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Let be, us therefore as many as be complete. Be thus minded. Be mindful. And if anything ye be otherwise minded. If ye be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. God gonna make it known. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Whereto we have already attained. Had what? Let us walk by the same rule. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, listen to the old man. Amen. Let us walk. Let us walk by the same rule. What Jesus gave his apostles, the entire state of Georgia supposed to have. Right. You're not supposed to go in no church and find another religion, another belief. Yeah. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormon, Muslim, Jehovah Witnesses, a comic book religion. Amen. Amen. Whatever Jesus was, that's what you're supposed to be. Did Jesus say he was Baptist? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was non-denominational? Why are you? Hmm. Did Jesus say he was Protestant? No. Why are you? <laughs> Did Jesus say he was Catholic? Well, why are you? That's right. That's right. Did Jesus say he was apostolic? No. Why are you? Amen. Did Jesus say he was Lutheran? No. Why are you? Did Jesus say he was non-denominational? No. Why are you? That's right. Are you listening? That's right. These are things we never thought about. Yeah. We went to church. We clapped. We shout. And we never asked questions. We jump and shout and fall out and give money and never ask the preacher questions. Why are you professing a religion that never exists in your Bible? Amen. Think. Amen. If God is our father, is he not? Yes. Yes. And we are the children of God, shouldn't we be what our heavenly father is? Yes. So ask yourself, what is God? Give me Leviticus. In Leviticus chapter 19. I don't want to make up nothing. Yeah. If anybody disagree with me or want to question me, you got your privilege to do what you're not allowed to do in your church. Raise your hands and stop me whenever you're ready. Interrupt me whenever you're ready. I'll pick up any question you got and strip it down with Bible and push it back on your way again. That's right. If you can't question a man about what he preached, stop giving him money. Amen. I listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. 
Whatever man preach, you got your Bible right. Yes. Yes. The question him from A to Z. Yes. That's right. See, is what he's telling you lined up according with the Bible, or did it come from a college? That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? In Leviticus chapter 19, and we'll start at verse 1. All right. And the Lord spake. No, Gino Jennings spake. And the Lord spake. No, Pastor Gino Nicolius Jennings spake. And the Lord spake. Get me out of it. Amen. The Lord spake. Unto Moses. Unto Moses. Saying, speak unto all speak the congregation. Speak unto all the congregation. Of the children of, of the Israel. Children of Israel. And say unto them. What did the Lord say? Tell them. Ye shall be holy. Why? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Who told you you? You are what you are. Amen. You Baptist, Methodist, non-denominational, apostolic, and all this other junk. Yeah. Who told you you was that? Amen. In fact, who gave you the right to claim you that? That's right. That's right. If the Lord said, "Be holy," oh. then gave you the reason why. Yeah. For I, the Lord your God, For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Amen. He had holy apostles. That's right. Now. An apostle is one that God called, God sent, God anointed, God instructed, God made, given the authority from authority to represent authority. Amen. That's one that God sent. That's a person. But there's no religion that's called apostolic. No. Nowhere in your Bible. That's right. I want to soak you a little. That's right. You can shout next year. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. John was called John the Baptist because he was a baptizer. His occupation was a baptizer. That's right. But you don't have a religion nowhere in the Bible called Baptist. Amen. Not one. That's right. Every Baptist church in Georgia ought to padlock your doors. Yeah. It ain't a Baptist preacher or a Baptist member that's baptized right tonight. Go ahead. Why would you profess a religion? That never exists in your book. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. You say you're Jehovah Witnesses knocking on people's doors early in the morning, interrupting their fishing grits. <laughs> Go to your Bible and see did Jesus or his apostles ever profess to be Jehovah Witnesses? Amen. We shout. We jump, you fall out, your eyes get all white. And nobody never stop. Here's my religion in the Bible. I debate religions all around the world. And I always ask them one question. Show me your religion in the Bible. That's right. Don't bring me Webster. I don't care nothing about Webster. Bring me Jesus. Amen. Bring me what's written. That's it. The Bible said we profess a good profession before many witnesses, and this is our witness right here. That's right. If it's not in the Bible, get out of it. Get out. I don't care if your family in it, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your slap happy grandpappy. Yeah. Look at your houses. Look at your house now. Father is a Baptist. Mother is Jehovah Witness. Son is Pentecostal. Daughter is non-denominational. And grandpappy is apostolic. That's right. You got in one neighborhood 20 and 30 churches. Right. And everybody come out being a Christian 20 and 30 ways. And these devil deceived Christians will say, it don't matter what you believe. We all one down inside. Use the child of the devil. Amen. It does matter what you believe. Oh, yeah. Your belief is not supposed to conflict That's right. with what God believes. That's right. God says, one Lord. Amen. The religious world says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, these three are one is the Trinity. Trinity ain't never been in the Bible. No. It never had been in there. No. It came from Rome, Italy. It ain't come from no Bible. No. God is one. One Lord. There's no God with them. There's no God besides him. There's no God equal to him. Damn. There's no God greater than him. Yeah. He made the heavens and earth alone. He stretched forth the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom. That's right. What did the Apostle Paul tell us? Let us walk by the same rule. Give chapter and verse again. Back in Philippians. I want everybody to follow me in the Bible. That's it. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want, I want all the preachers to follow me. 
preach. Amen. That, that way you can stop writing your sermons out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. When you find men got to write his sermon out, he ain't no preacher. No. The stuff is already written. It's in the Bible. That's right. That's right. That's right. The Bible already said whatsoever things is written aforetime is written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's enough information in that Bible where you ain't got to sit up all night, write a sermon, and give it a text. There's only one text, and that's truth. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. In Philippians chapter 3, and we're at verse 16. What have God said? What? Let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind. Let us mind. The same thing. The same thing. Brethren. Brethren. Be followers together of Wait me. Wait a minute. Be followers separate. Be followers together <laughs> of me. Now think of it. On one occasion, it is written. One say, I am of Paul. Yeah. I am of Apollos. Of Apollos. I am of Cephas. For it hath been declared Listen unto at me this. in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It hath been declared unto you. And at verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me, that what? You, my brethren, that ye, my brothers, by them which are of the house of Chloe, uh -huh. that there are contentions among you. There are contentions among you. And God knows that's what's going on around the world now. Oh, yeah. Contentions. There's contentions. Among you. Among you. Now this I say. And you know when you're standing for the word of God and you have those that won't, it brings about contention. Amen. So one of the biggest things that cripple churches, family churches. That's right. Preachers are scared to stand up for the word because he's scared of getting a rebuttal from his family. That's right. This Bible ain't fixed up to satisfy your wife. Amen. It ain't fixed up to satisfy your son and daughter. Yeah. In fact, it ain't fixed up to satisfy you. That's right. We got to make the changes to satisfy God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. What is that? That there are contentions among you. Contentions among you. Now this I say. This I say. That every one of you saith. This, I, this is the way folks are now. Mm -hmm. Every one of you say. I am of Paul. That's the way folks are. I'm Baptist. That's right. I'm Methodist. I'm Presbyterian. Yeah. I'm a Baptist man going to hear holiness. Amen. I'm a Methodist man. Out of all these religions. Yeah. And listen at this real good. Now this I say, mm -hmm. that every one of you saith, yeah. I every am of Paul. Every one of you say, I am of Paul. And I of Apollos. Another group say, I'm of Apollos. And I of another Cephas. Another group say, I'm of Cephas, and, or I'm of Peter. And I of Christ. And another one say, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? No. 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 Is Christ divided? No. Amen. What? Was Paul crucified for you? No. No. I know you was taught in seminary school and in little Bible class and in history that Paul was crucified head down and feet up. No, Paul, Paul supposed to have died at Nero's chopping block. Have you heard that? The Bible ain't never said how Paul was died. Never. never. Seminary school says Peter was crucified head down and feet up. It ain't no such crucifixion in the Bible. No. Seminary school said there's five minor prophets and five major. Mm -hmm. The Bible ain't never called none of the prophets major or minor. That's right. Seminary school said when Jesus come, Gabriel going to blow the trumpet first. You liar. That's a lie. Bible ain't say Gabriel going to blow nothing. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. That's right. Then they say so. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. All this stuff been taught for years. Yeah. And no one ever asked no questions. Seminary school said when Jesus rose, Mary preached the first message. You old liar. That's a lie. Bible ain't said she preached to nobody. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead and all he did was tell Mary, tell Mary, tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. That's they ain't no different than me coming here in, in Augusta and may tell Mother Way, look, tell the, uh, your husband and the brothers to meet me over there at the church. That's it. That's it. That's it. Bible ain't said she preached to nobody. No. Let's come on back to Bible. Amen. Eh? Amen. Let's come on back to Bible. That's right. 
Glory, thank God if you don't want the Bible as your guideline, padlock the doors of your church. Amen. And everybody might as well just go on out there and have fun because Amen. you're going to hell anyway. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? No, Paul was not crucified for you. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Do you hear that? Amen. How were you baptized tonight, Georgia? Yeah. How were you baptized tonight, Georgia? That's were right. you baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? That's right. Or, were you ba or, or, or did someone hold the hands of a preacher and pray some cheap sinner's prayer? Amen. Were you told to join the church and you save? Mm. You no more saved than the elephant can tap dance with Fred Astaire. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Your salvation, where did it come from, Georgia? Mm. Examine your salvation and see is it in the Bible. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, the preacher made an altar call and I helped his hand and prayed a sinner's prayer. Mm. It ain't no sinner's prayer in the Bible. No. Well, Pastor Jennings, I got baptized and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He done what Jesus said. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Jesus didn't say baptize Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. I want to say, Jesus did say that, but he did not. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Look closely at what he said. I want this to be good for preachers and so-called missionaries and deaconess. What a mess and everything else. That's right. <laughs> you that got your second wives and third husbands and everything. Everything. Amen. Oh, yeah, this is for you, too. Amen. We have so much to cover tonight. I want to work on you while I have you here. Amen. <laughs> All right. Matthew 28 and verse 19. What is it? Go ye therefore. And do what? And teach all nations. What do Georgia need? Teach all nations. They need teaching down here. Oh, yeah. oh you got all the jumping and shouting and the hoop line, all that other. I ain't paying that mess no mind. No. You need some teaching today. I, that's right. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them how? In the name of the Father. No, just Father. In the name <coughs> of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. No, just baptize them. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Baptizing them in the name. That's where the preacher missed out. That's right. All you Baptists and Presbyterian and non-denominationals and Pentecostals and all of you out there, many of you was baptized Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but you never got the, the, name. Name, the name of that Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's right. So that's why the preacher just took you in water and said, I baptize you, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Took you down and brought you up. You ain't baptized. No. You are wet. That's it. If I tell you do something in my name. name, is my name Father? No. no. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband. No. But if I tell you do something in my name, are you going to say Father, Son, or Husband, or are you going to call my name Jennings? That's it. That's right. That's right. Jesus said. Baptizing them in the name of the, the Father. In the name, in the name, in the name. In the name of the Father. Yeah, how can you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost unless you know the name you know of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? That's and right. when you know the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I can go down in the name That's of right. the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But first, I got to find out what it is. What it is. That's right. All right, preachers. Mm -hmm. Children. Mm -hmm. Old folk, church goers, bench warmers. Yeah. How are you baptized? How are you baptized? What did Jesus say? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And, and of the Son. And, and of the Holy Ghost. All right, let's find out the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 20 and 19, they was told to go do, go it. do it. It wasn't done there. That's right. They was told to go do it. That's right. There was no baptism being performed there. Right. It was fulfilled later on in Jerusalem mm -hmm. after. Of the resurrection of Jesus, That's he right. told them, Go to Jerusalem That's right. and stay there. Yeah. Thank God until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. When he ascended above all heavens, That's right. thank God he sent the Holy Ghost back to get the church started on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Peter stood up. That's right. Thank God with the 11. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said unto them, said to them, Repent. No, join the church. Repent. 
No, Peter said, join the church. Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, anybody want a church home, stand up. I give you a home. Peter said unto them, repent. No, I, op I open the, ch the doors of the church and give you a church home. Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, sit on the mourner's bench and get several different works of grace. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Bow your head and raise your dirty hands and accept Christ where you sit at. Peter said unto them, repent. This is where you got all this cheap man-made religion. Amen. Come on back to Bible. That's right. When you come back to the Bible, you're safe. That's right. Eh? What did the Holy Ghost say here? In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. That's what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, Georgia. Repent. Everything in here got to repent. Repent. What do you mean repent? Notice, the Bible ain't never tell you just run and be baptized. No. He wants some conviction to set in first. That's right. That's right. You got something to repent for. Amen. Well, what I got to repent for, Pastor Jennings, for being a child of the devil. Mm -hmm. Hmm? That's what you got to repent for. That's right. All them cigarettes you love to smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that drinking you've been doing. Yeah. That bar you still got in your so-called Christian home. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got to repent for it. Repent. You got to repent for being married to that second wife because your first wife's still living. Go ahead. Bro brother adulterer. Go ahead. Eh? Go ahead. You got to repent, repent for having that woman's husband. Yeah. Because you know that woman, that woman is still living. And the first wife of that man is still living. Mm -hmm. And you, that man's second wife. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a spare tire. That's right. Repent. Are you listening? Amen. You're just a spare tire, yeah. and I'm here to take your hair out. Right. I'm here to take your hair out. Go ahead, go ahead. Repent! Then Peter said unto them, repent. I don't care if you don't like Pastor Jennings. I don't like you either. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That goes for the pulpit. If any of you got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. That's right. You ain't fit to preach to a dog in the street. That's right. If there's any preachers up here got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. Yeah. All right, listen to what I'm telling you. Right. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost said. Then Peter said unto, unto them, repent. You a deacon, mm -hmm. and you got a second wife. Second, second wife. You ain't got no business being no deacon. No. You got a second husband, you shouldn't be on no organ. Yes. You shouldn't be on no drums. Yes. You shouldn't be on the choir. Amen. You should be giving up that second meat. That's right. That ain't yours. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Go ahead. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church. Preach it, brother. You got more than one wife? Yeah. Use a disgrace. Yeah. Even God got one wife. That's right. I want to say, God got one wife. It's called the church. The church, the church is the bride. That's right. They only got one. Amen. 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 You know, you know, we living in a sad time when I preach about one wife and people <laughs> look at me like I cussed. <laughs> That's right. Bro. You know, we're living in a sick time. Well, I preach about having one wife, yeah. and folk look at me like I said something foul. Amen. Because when you live the foul, dirty life, yeah. and then the word come to clean you up for real. For real. Not just play in church. If you want to play church, stay home. Yeah. It's heaven or hell. That's right. There's no in between. That's right. You got a second husband, Go ahead. and your first husband living, living, you're not a Christian. No. You got a second wife, mm -hmm. and your first wife still alive, Amen. you ain't saved. No, you're not, brethren. Give me the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 1. We're working on walking by the same by rule. The same rule. Same rule. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see the rule of marriage now. Romans chapter 7, and we're at verse 1. All right. No, you're not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Wait a minute. How long does the law have power over that man? Hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. What? For the woman which hath an husband 
is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be in prison. If the husband be dead. No, went blind. But if the husband be dead. Got a bad back. If the husband be dead. He drank. But if the husband be dead. No, dying. But if the husband be dead. What got to happen to him? If the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Wait a minute. Amen. He, if, if he's what? But if the husband be dead, then what? She is loosed from the law of her husband. And so then if, if, while her husband All right, dead, Georgia. Amen. Georgia. Georgia. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Eh? That's right. Get this now. So then if, if while her husband liveth, while your husband is alive, she be married to another you man. Are married to another man, what did the Bible call her? She shall be called an adulteress. But she's shouting. An adulteress. She's speaking in tongues. She shall be called an adulteress. She's on the choir. An adulteress. She's the pastor's daughter. An adulteress. Your mama. An adulteress. Your wife. An adulteress. Your grandmama. An adulteress. Your sister. An adulteress. The usher. An adulteress. Do you hear the Bible talking? She shall be called an adulteress. Only reason why these preachers won't preach against it because they got a second sweetheart themselves. That's right. That's right. Now, if there's any preachers up here and Amen. you got another wife Amen. and your first wife's still living, Amen. you not an adulteress, no. brother. You are an adulterer. In James chapter four and give me James four and four. James chapter four and verse four. You, an adulterer is the man. That's right. An adulteress is the woman. That's right. Let me show you this in the Bible. James chapter four and verse four. All right. Ye adulterers. That's the man. And adulteresses. That's the woman. No, ye not. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world. The friendship of the world. Is enmity with God. Glory to God. Amen. Whosoever. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. You're God's enemy. Is the enemy. Of God. I don't want to be a friend of the world. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the world. Fighting the world. So maybe it's all about it, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm fighting the world. That's right. And I'm fighting the world like the apostles fought the world. That's right. And I'm fighting them with God everlasting word. That's right. But that the apostle Paul said there in Romans. Back in Romans 7 and verse 3. So then if. If. While your husband liveth. While your husband. Listen. While Billy is alive. Amen. While Billy is still living. That's right. Uh-huh. She, she be married to another man. And yet you married to Melvin. She shall be called an adulteress. Every time, listen. Let me make it so plain. If your married name is Miss, Mrs. Black. And the relationship didn't work out between you and Mr. Black. Yeah. And now you got your second husband, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time you are called Mrs. Brown, yeah. you a liar. That's right. You know why? Black is still living. That's right. Black ain't dead yet. Amen. When you introduce yourself as, I'm Miss Brown, liar. That's a lie. When the members in the church call you Sister Brown and they know Brother Black is still living, the members are liars. That's right. If the preacher addressed you as Sister Black, uh, or rather Sister Brown, and he know your husband, Brother Black, is yeah. still living, he lie every time he say it. Every time you sign the check, Mrs. Brown, you lie. That's right. That's right. You a liar. That's a lie. Well, Pastor Dennis, he beat me. Then the Bible justifies separation. That's right. Because the Lord said he hate divorce. Yeah. Give me the 7th chapter, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Follow me. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 7, we'll start at verse 10. And if there's any preachers that disagree, well, I take your question tonight. Don't wait till I, don't wait till I leave town to start hollering. That's right. You do your hollering while I'm here. That's right. That goes for you out there, too. Amen. Do your hollering, your question while I'm here. Yes, sister. Come on now. What if um, the, the, the child is dead? They was married, but the parents signed for them at an early age of 17. And the parents signed for them to be married. 
When you say the parents signed for them, the parents signed how? At the courthouse. The, the marriage license. Uh -huh. And they signed for them to be married. The Bible says obey magistrates. magistrates. Magistrates is the law of the land. If your signature is on that license, if your name is on that license, the only way that license would not be valid if your name was forged. That's right. Because the Lord said he hated every false way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The Lord said he hated every false way, and the Bible says on the falsehood had they hid themselves. That's the only way that license would not be legit. Yeah. But if you're in a country where a parent can sign and that don't break the law of that country, then you're bound. Yeah. Because the Bible says obey magistrates, mm -hmm. and magistrate is the law of the land. And if there is no law that contradict what was done, then you're bound. That's right. Put them in mind. The Bible says. In the book of Titus chapter 3, we're at verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Titus chapter 3 and we're at verse 1. Says what? Put them in mind. That's what I'm doing. Amen. I want to put you in mind. To be subject. To be subject. To principalities. Principalities. And powers. And powers. To obey magistrates. That's the laws of the land. That's right. Now. We, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in obeying the laws of the land as long as they don't contradict God. That's right. When the law of the land contradict God, we are fight that fight law it. tooth and nail. That's right. And you won't get no cooperation out of us. No. If that law contradict God. That's right. Or it take God, but if that law is in keeping with God's law, mm -hmm. then the church got to say, Amen. Amen to it. That's right. All right, question. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Mm -hmm. All right. But does she have to sign for the divorce for for me to be the In order for that second marriage to come to an end, it has to be done legally. Yeah. See, when the Bible speak against divorce, it speak against divorce when you're really married. Yeah. If she was your first wife, you can't divorce her. That's right. But your second wife, she's not yours. You got to get rid of that which is not yours. That's right. And it has to be done legally. Legally. You got to go back to the court and get rid of what is, what is not yours no way. <laughs> then the Bible says, save who? Yourself. Then save yourself. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. No, you. You don't have to. If your husband dies, getting married again is up to you. So you free now. You're free. You ain't bound because he's dead, and you're free. If you get married again, that's totally up to you. You know, that's, that's, it's no commandment that says you got to get married again, but. You can't give your body to nobody. First Corinthians. Can't give your body to nobody. Yes, 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 sister. That's all right. Good. Excellent. I have a friend who's never been married. Okay. All right. Bible doesn't give permission to no man live under your roof and he ain't your husband. You know what the old folk call that? Shacking up. And as a decent and respectable woman, that man ain't your husband. Get him out from under that roof. For as a decent and respectable woman, you have to be an example to the young women. Get that man from under your roof. That's right. Yes, sir. All right, he wants the Old Testament where second wife was allowed in the book of Numbers 15. Mm -hmm. 
All right, yes. Right, you know, I, I want you to expound on that. All right, which verse do you want? I'm going to start at verse number uh, 25. Numbers 15, uh, begin at verse 25. Numbers 15. Numbers 15, we'll start at verse 25. All right, real quick. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel. Yes. And it shall be forgiven them. And for it is ignorance. It, it is what? It is ignorance. Now, in the Old Testament, the priest atoned for your ignorance. Right. right. See, in the Old Testament, the priest did it. That's right. We're not under the Old Testament now. No. Jesus came along and atoned for our sins, but now if, when we come to you doing wrong, you got to go. You got to repent. You got to go and get yourself straightened out by biblical order. That's right. See, back then, the priest did it. That's right. All right. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation uh -huh. of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them. Yes. For it is ignorant. It is what? It is ignorant. Yes, it is ignorant. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire, unto the Lord. Well, the only sacrifice now you got to come and offer up is not no lamb, not no goat. It's your body. Your body. For the Bible said, present your body, living sacrifice, holding, accept the one to God, which is your reason of service. Mm -hmm. And it has to be offered by what? And they shall bring the offering of sacrifice made by fire. Made by what? Fire. Oh, back then you had to take fire and light the offering so the fire can consume the sacrifice. And the sacrifice is nothing left but ashes. That's right. Well, we ain't bringing no meat now and getting the match and light it. No. The offering is us, and the fire is the Holy Ghost. That's right. And that's come now, yeah. through and by the word of God, to consume all the wickedness that is in us. That's right. All right. And their sin offering before the Lord, and for their ignorance. <coughs> for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven for all the congregation of the children of Israel. Now, if you didn't know it was wrong to divorce and remarry, you would be forgiven. Forgiven. But when you are forgiven, that don't mean for you to remain in it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you can be forgiven, mm -hmm. but that don't mean for you to remain in it. That's oh, right. Pastor Jim, will the Lord forgive me? Yes, thank God he forgave me. All right, but yet you keep riding back to home with your second wife and second husband. You're still living together. Mm -hmm. You repented five years ago, and yet five years later, right. you're still in the same predicament. That's right. No change. That's right. Uh -huh. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel. Yeah. And the stranger that, so, that sojourneth among them, uh -huh. seeing all the people were in ignorance. Yeah. And if any soul sin through if ignorance. any soul sin through ignorance. Then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. You ain't doing all that now. No. No. You, you, you sin through ignorance. Now you got to bring yourself. Once you come to the knowledge of the truth of the gospel. And one thing about anyone that's sincere wants to be right. And you're ignorant. Give me the 17th chapter. Let's balance that out with the New Testament. Mm. The 17th chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Amen. Let's balance, let's balance the ignorance out with New Testament. That's right. Amen. Let's make, let's make the apostles and the, apo the apostles and the prophets harmonize. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, and we're at verse 30. All right. And the times of this ignorance. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. And the times of this ignorance. And the time when you didn't know no better. God yeah. winked at. Who did it? God winked at. Oh, God had mercy on you when you didn't know no better, but what? But now. But what? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Never mind the priest. Never mind the offering up. When? Now. Now. Commandeth all men. Now what do God command for us to do? Everywhere. To do what? To repent. When you're ignorant now and you come into the knowledge of the word, now you got to repent. Repent. Everywhere. You got, you got who, how much got to do it? Everywhere. Give chapter and verse again. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Now when you don't know, now you come into the knowledge of knowing. Mm -hmm. Now he commandeth all men everywhere, everywhere to repent. To repent. So a lot of folk I me mean, say, Pastor Jim, I didn't know that second marriage was wrong. All right, then you cannot be held accountable for what you didn't know. That's right. But the moment you hear it, yeah. the moment you hear it, yeah. that excuse is no more. That's right. The moment you hear it, right then, judgment start come at you. That's right. God hold you accountable instantly. Therefore, right then. Therefore, Romans chapter three and read verse one. I get you after. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. You don't have no excuse. Whosoever thou art the judge. Whoever you are, that judge. All right, brother, come on. That's all right. Go ahead, brother. It's uh, about self-defense and uh, entertainment, and he justifies like having guns and, and stuff like that. Uh, and I want to know where Matthew five thirty nine fits into that. All right, Matthew five thirty nine. Let's deal with having guns in case I got anyone here packing. Right. <laughs> Amen. 
39. Matthew 5 and at verse 39. Matthew 5, 39. Follow but, me. But I say unto you. I say to you. That ye resist not evil. Ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, uh -huh. turn to him the other also. No, uh, whoever smites you on the right cheek, turn and get your 38. Turn to, turn to him the other also. No, turn and get your 45. Turn to him the other also. That scripture that the preacher brought condemns him. Yeah. Let's see where Apostle Paul deal with weaponry. Now in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Follow me. And we'll start reading at verse 3. Come on, son. For though we walk in the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For Why? The, for the weapons, for the of, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see, when you got guns and knives and all that, that's carnal. That's right. Now, we, we don't have those kind of weapons. What we got? But mighty through God. You see, our weapon is mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. That's the weapon we have. Amen. Mighty through God. I have a weapon. Yeah. I have a hammer. That's right. The Bible is called a hammer. That's right. Breaks rock in pieces. Yeah. That same weapon is called an axe. Amen. Laid at the roots. Yeah. So I can disconnect you from the wickedness that nurture you. Go ahead. That same weapon is called a sword. Go ahead. So I can sever ties. Amen. Between you and the devil. Amen. The weapon of our warfare. Of our warfare. Are not carnal. Guns and all that stuff is colonel. But mighty through God. But it's mighty through God. To what the, does this weapon do? To the pulling down of strongholds. This weapon. Amen. Regardless of how tight the devil got you. Yes. Pull down. This weapon. A pull down. Stronghold. That stronghold. And casting down. And a cast down. Imagination. Every type of vain thought you have. That's right. That same weapon. And casting down. Get in your mind. Cast down every imagination. And every high thing. And every high thing that exalts itself. Against the knowledge of God. What does it do? And bring it bring into, into captivity. captivity every thought. To the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. Amen. So we don't use guns, knives, none of that. None of that. Our weapon is God's eternal word. That's right. All right, brother. Yes, sir. Come on, brother. Yes. Change your belief. Uh. Okay, before I started listening to you, I started listening to you since I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Before I started listening to you, I believed it was okay to divorce. But then I started listening to you, and I believed that what you said, how separate, you could separate, but mm -hmm. you can't divorce. Yes. But in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, when I was reading it, um, my brother called me, and he was, in, he was, I, was I was arguing with him because he said uh -huh. you could divorce and stuff. But... Re in reading it again... He went and got the scripture that a man not in the bond is in such cases? No, I, I was reading and I saw where it said, where you where you used to say that you can separate, mm -hmm. that it says let him remain unmarried. Yes. How are you unmarried if you're not divorced? Ah, let's go to work in the seventh chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and we'll start at verse 10. Yes. And unto the married I command. Yet, unto the married I command. Yet not I. Yet not I. But the Lord. So you can't credit Paul or me or no one else. That's right. What is it? Let not the wife depart from her husband. Hold it. That's right. God is letting you know right here what he prefers. That's right. Well, he preferred not to happen. Let not the wife. The Lord knew that every relationship ain't going to work out. That's right. He's not a fool. Amen. So being that he know every relationship won't work out, just in case something do happen, mm -hmm. he got another law implemented. That's right. So when something do happen, he already got a law that you got to comply with when it do happen. That's right. Uh -huh. Let not the wife depart from her husband. What? But. But. And if she depart. If she do leave, let her remain unmarried. That simply means don't let her get no one else. That's right. That's all that means. That's right. When she do leave, yeah. that simply means don't let her get no one else. Yeah. Because she left her husband. Yeah. When the Bible said left her husband right then that established what kind of relationship she was in. Let she was married. So when it said let her remain unmarried, mean don't let her become newly married to no one else. That's right. 
But what? Let not the wife depart from her husband. I'm going to show you that it proves that she is not delinquishing or get rid of the fact that she's married or. But and if she depart. If she leaves. Let her remain unmarried. Or. Or be reconciled. To who? To her husband. If a marry end, if a marry ended, why would it say if you want reconciliation, go back to your husband? Her husband. Amen. If she depart. If she's still not married, why would God say, if you want to depart, go ahead and depart, or, or be, be reconciled, reconciled to her husband? It didn't say go back and marry him again. No. He's already her husband. That's right. That's right. It says be reconciled. Reconciled. It didn't say go back and have a ceremony. No. It just said be reconciled. Be reconciled. So the one that tried to justify marriage, they don't know what they're talking about. No. The men that try to justify marriage are men that's after the flesh. That's, that's right. why Paul said, they that are after the flesh do oh mind the things of the flesh. That's right. Give me the tenth, the tenth chapter of the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Mark chapter 10. Let's see what Jesus said. Mark 10, and we'll start at verse 1. Because this subject always stir up a hornet's nest. Yeah. Eh? Because a lot of folk got to give up their honeycomb and they don't want to. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Eh? Mark chapter 10, we'll start at verse 1. Come on, son. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. Yes. And the people resort unto him again. Uh -huh. And as he was one, he taught them again. As he was one, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him. And said what? And asked him. All right. Is it lawful for a man to is put away his wife? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. Ah. Mm. Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, and what? what did Moses command you? Oh, folks love Moses. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they love Moses more than Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You'll find that so-called saved woman. I don't care what you say, Pastor Jennings. I ain't getting rid of my second husband. I didn't write the Bible. No. Don't put it on me because you're living in adultery. That's right. Don't put it on me. That's right. I didn't write the Bible. I wouldn't care if you married a cow or had little cowlets. <laughs> what would I care? My job is to tell you what the word of God said. That's right. What did it say, son? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command? Uh -huh. And they said, Moses suffered to write Moses a bill of divorce. Suffered you to write a bill of divorce. Notice who lets him do it? Moses. Not suffered. God. Moses. Moses let you do it. Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. God says from the beginning mm -hmm. it was not so. Not so. But Moses come along. Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement. One scripture says Moses because of the hardness of your heart. Of your hearts. That lets you know Moses was dealing with the fleshy people. That's right. A hard hearted people. That's right. Not only that it lets you know who, what kind of people divorce is for. And Jesus it's answered. It's for them that got a hard heart. For the hardness of your heart. For the hardness of your heart. He wrote you this precept. God people not supposed to have a hard heart. Hard heart. God people supposed to have a humble heart. That's right. All right, I get you. Come on. For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. All right. But from the beginning from of the, the begin creation. From the, wait a minute, how far? From the beginning of the creation. What? God made them male and female. Uh -huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And do what? And cleave to his wife. No, shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his man. And right. cleave to his wife. All right. All right, you Georgia bunny rabbits. Amen. The Holy Ghost says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Shall a man leave father and mother. And cleave to his wife. Yeah. It ain't say cleave to no man and you a man. No. Or cleave to a woman and you a woman. No. Cleave to what? To his wife. To his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. They twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twine but one flesh. But what? What therefore God has joined together. What God has joined together let not man. Put asunder. That got your lawyer. That's right. That got your attorney. That's right. Uh-huh. That it, got your pastor. Yeah. What like the United Pentecostal and the PAW that tell you so quickly, go ahead and divorce them. Oh, they got more divorce in these churches than sinners. That's true. Paul Pitt, three T D Jakes justified divorce. Quefla O'Dollar justified it. Benny Hinn justified it. Joel Alstein justified it. Yeah. Fred Price justified it. Yeah. Dr. Phil justified it. That's Oprah right. justified it. That's right. Every child of hell justified it. Yeah. But Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can go in churches and almost every preacher, two or three and four wives. Yeah. And he get up there and lie. I know what God told me. God ain't never told nobody nothing to contradict the Bible. That's right. 
That's right. Are you listening to the old man? What therefore God has joined together. I want you to get this. You that's jumping and shouting. You know, a lot of folk can't speak in tongue over this. No. Eh? Amen. My God, well, they, they, they start off with a tongue until this tongue. That's right. When this, when, when this come, that tongue gets stuck to the roof. Uh, Amen. Eh? Amen. Glory to take God. Amen. It gets stuck. Amen. You've got these adultery wife trading preachers. They trade wives like someone trade cars. That's true. Listen. What therefore God has joined together. What God has joined together. Let not, let man, not man put man. asunder. Uh -huh. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same manner. What? And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Whosoever shall, whosoever. All right, all right. Whosoever. Georgia, everything in Georgia fall under the whosoever. Whosoever. Whosoever is black. Whosoever is white, whosoever is yellow, yeah. I don't care how old or how young, mm -hmm. the word of God is talking to you tonight. Whosoever. Whosoever. I want everybody to be very quiet and listen. Call chapter and verse. Mark chapter 10, now we're at verse 11. Whosoever. 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 Shall put away his wife. Shall put away his wife. And marry another. What did God call her? Committeth adultery yeah. against her. Whosoever, whosoever shall put away his wife, shall put away his wife, and marry another, and get another one, committeth adultery against her. What if they shout? Committeth adultery against her. They speak in tongues. Committeth adultery against her. They on the choir. Committeth adultery against her. They're the pastor twin sister. Committeth adultery against her. The pastor's daughter. Committeth adultery against her. You a preacher, you should not be performing a wedding. That's right. And you know that man got a living wife. That's right. And that woman got a living husband. Amen. And you standing up there talking about a holy matrimony. Holy man. Call it for what it is. Amen. It's an adulterous matrimony. That's right. That's right. Amen. The moment you said it's a holy matrimony, you's a liar. Amen. If you a preacher, you's a liar. That's right. Whosoever, whosoever shall put away his wife and put away his wife and marry another. What did the Bible say? Committeth adultery against her. And and if a woman, if a woman shall put away her husband, uh oh, got you too, sis. That's right. That's if right. a woman shall put away her husband, shall put away her husband, and be married to another, and you got another, she committeth adultery. Amen. So, therefore, anytime you know a brother that got a living wife, he get married again. Mm -hmm. You know a woman that got a living husband, she get married again. Mm -hmm. When you in the church by the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't say congratulations. No. You don't give them a card. No, no. They don't even go to the wedding. That's right. You don't perform the wedding. That's right. You don't allow your children to be in it. Amen. Because if they do, you're stripped in the hands of evil doers. That's right. And the Bible says, not he that doeth the wrong, but he that have pleasure, pleasure. in them that do it. That's right. Yes, sir. If a woman. Listen, 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 my, listen. Mm -hmm. In Mark chapter 10, we're at verse 12. You claim you're a preacher here. You know your, yeah. your son, first wife is alive. Yeah. But you love your son more than you love the Bible. That's right. And you are compromised for your weak son. Right. Anytime a man compromised for his family, you're not a preacher. Get out the pulpit. Amen. Get out, I say. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. This holy matrimony. You're a liar. You got to call it for what it is. Yeah. All you preachers that's watching around the world. Oh, hey. You know your daughter got married and her husband's still living. Mm -hmm. You got an adulterous matrimony. That's right. So when you stand up there, call it for what it is. Yeah. All of you are here to witness this adulterous relationship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I pronounce you adulterer and adulteress. That's right. Am I right, I say? I pronounce you adulterer and adulteress. Amen. Go ahead. The moment you say I pronounce you husband and wife, you have lied on God. That's right. Because God didn't call him husband. 
And God didn't call them wife. She shall be called an adulteress. So you got to call her that. That's right. Well, what did God call a man and what did God call the woman? The adulterers and adulteresses. Go back to the book of Mark. Sound right where you're reading at. Come on now. Amen. Back in Mark chapter, chapter 10. Chapter the book of Mark. And at verse 11. Listen now what did the man get another wife? And he saith unto them. He saith unto them. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whoever put away his wife. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery against her. He commit adultery. All right. So at, besides saying that's a holy matrimony. Let that man know you committed adultery. That's right. All right. And if a woman shall put away her husband. All right, sister. Mm -hmm. If a woman shall put away her husband. You can be the usher, choir director. You can be the pastor's daughter, the pastor's niece, the pastor's sister-in-law, the pastor's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can be the pastor's nephew, uncle, grandpappy, twin brother. That's right. You can be the pastor's deacon. Yes, sir. Little junior jackleg minister. That's right. <laughs> Come on back to Bible, Georgia. Amen. All of Georgia's going to hell. Yeah. I didn't say some of it, all of Georgia. Oh, you can attach the rest of the whole state to little Augusta. <laughs> That's right. Or if that gun of you don't come along and follow the Bible, follow the, the whole state going to be dragged to hell. Amen. Are you listening? And if a woman... If a woman shall put away her husband, shall put away her husband and be married to another. Ain't no need for no preacher to come after this message and try to butter it up. This is what you are. That's, and if a woman shall put away her husband, ain't no preacher to come after this message to try to butter it up because somebody's feelings got hurt. Use a false prophet. That's right. That's right. If this is a thorn sticking in you, ain't no need for no one to pull up and try to pull it out. No. <laughs> because I'm gonna stick it back in you tomorrow. Amen. If a woman. Eh? Amen. That's one thing about a false prophet. They're afraid to offend you, offend you. Because they don't, you know, they, they don't want to do their thing to stop the money from coming. That's right. I wouldn't care if you made a million dollars a day and gave $200,000 offering and $500,000 tied. I'd knock you over with the <laughs> Bible while you got your check and ink pen in your hand. Yes, you would. All right, listen to the old man. Amen. I was made a preacher. Yeah. Yes, Never took a Bible course since I've been born. Yeah. God opened up my understanding, hallelujah, and made me a preacher. I cannot be bought by nobody. That's right. And I'm not a sellout yeah. at all. At all. You either for God or you're against him. That's right. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. What did the holy book say? And if a woman shall put away her if husband. a woman put away your husband. And be married to another. All right, woman, who's that man you're going back home with tonight? Yeah. Oh, who, who, who's that man waiting for you at home? That's right. Is he yours? Go ahead. Man. Or are you riding on somebody else's bicycle? Mm. Are you that desperate you got to have another woman's husband? Go ahead. Are you that incompetent you can't get your own? Oh. Are you that desperate brother you got to have another man's wife? That's right. Do you lack so much skill you can't talk to a sister and get your own? That's right. Do you always got to catch somebody on the rebound? Oh. Am I right? Go ahead. How you gonna speak in tongue in your tongue down a man's throat that ain't your husband? Ain't your husband. How you gonna speak in tongue and your tongue down a woman's throat that ain't your wife? That's right. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. I'm a Christian. You are an adulterous liar. That's right. If a woman shall put away her husband. Here. Yeah. And be married to another. Here. Yeah. She committeth adultery. All right. Amen. Let's get having a child mm -hmm. by the other man. Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Let's get the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 23. And we'll start at I, verse I, 22. I got to get all of it. All of it. I got to get all of it. That's right. That's right. Go I got to get all of it. Amen. You won't get me to apologize to you. Oh, no. 
Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesi e Ecclesiasticus, chapter not, 23. Yeah, yeah. Not Ecclesiastes. Oh, no, Ecclesiasticus. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sarich. Chapter 23. Chapter 23. And we're starting in verse 22. Follow me. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leaveth her husband. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leave her husband. And bringeth in an heir by another. For first. Hold it. I'm going to read quick. That's right. That's right. You leave your husband. Amen. And you bring an heir by, by another. By Means another. you get pregnant by another man. That's right. Now, what category do God put them in? For first, first, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. First. Anytime you and your husband may be separated. But if you get pregnant by another man, first, the first thing you done, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. Your act of sex was disobedience. That's right. Your act of sex was not pleasure to God. Yeah. You was hard head. You were stubborn because God says that the woman has not power over her body but the husband. And what you did, you went against that and gave another man your body. Go ahead. Go ahead. First, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. The first one you disobeyed, she had disobeyed was your creator. That's right. She disobeyed the law of the Most High. Oh, he made me feel like my husband didn't. Your act was disobedient. Disobeyed. Bible says she that live in pleasure mm -hmm. is dead while she lives. That's right. For first, first, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. First one you disobeyed was your Lord. Second. Secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. You get pregnant by another man, mm -hmm. strike two. She you has trespassed against your own husband. Mm -hmm. Third strike. Thirdly, she has played the whore in adultery. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Thirdly, Thirdly, and they complain and say, Pastor Jennings got a foul mouth. I ain't got no foul mouth. This is the Bible talking. And thirdly, thirdly, she has played the whore. She has played what? The whore in adultery. Amen. Thirdly, God called her a playing whore. That's right. Played the whore. She played the whore in adultery. In adultery. And that, hold it. Mm -hmm. Right then it shows right you adultery is a whorish act. That's right. She has played the whore. Right then it's telling you adultery, adultery. is a whorish act. That's right. That's and right. When you're a man, you're a whoremonger. Whoremonger. That's right. A man that breaketh wedlock. Do you hear it? Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23. And at verse 18. You see, most churches ain't never had this teaching since they had a cross on the building. That's right. Huh? That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23, and at verse 18. Ecclesiasticus 23. Verse 18. 18. I get you, sister. All a, right. A man that breaketh wedlock. A man that break wedlock. Saying thus in his heart. Saying thus in his heart. Who seeth me? You think you hiding. That's right. Who see me? He, I, he, he, you, you just left church riding around in your Cadillac all slouched down. Look it. Who seeth me? Amen. You see, Amen. God God know the way that dumb man think. <laughs> That's right. So God recorded in the Bible the way the fool think. That's right. The Bible says, out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. Uh -huh. A man that breaketh wedlock. A man that breaketh uh, wedlock. Saying thus in his heart. Saying thus in his heart. Who seeth me? Who see me? I am compassed about with darkness. Oh, I'm surrounded in darkness. The walls cover me. Oh, the walls got me here. And nobody seeth Ain't me. Ain't nobody see me. What need I to fear? What need I to be scared of? The Most High will not remember my sins. Oh, that's what you think. Mm -hmm. He, he even tried to pull God in his wrong. That's right. Most high ain't gonna remember he against God know all things. That's right. And such a man only fears the eyes of men. That's the problem. Amen. This is what I want people to stop doing. Mm -hmm. 
Such you're a, so busy worrying about what people think of you, and you live to please people, that's right. and you forgot that your entire existence is supposed to be centered around pleasing God. That's right. That's right. Until the fear of God come back in church, the churches will be a mess. Yeah. Until the fear of God come in the pulpit, they're not going to stand and preach nothing but a mess. That's right. Read quick, and before I get this sister, I need to get my brother back there first. Mm. All right, read quick. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Yes. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are, thin, are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. <laughs> Do you hear that? Amen. You ever had anyone break out from prison and throw them spotlights on them? Yeah. And everywhere, whenever an inmate run, he always try to stay in the dark, in the shadow. That's right. Until that light hit him. Yeah. That's where you folks are. When the truth of God, they was running yeah. until that light of the truth of God hit him. That's right. When the light of the truth of God hit him, that light was so bright, they went running under that woman preaching. That couldn't hide him. Yeah. They went running and try to duck in some other religion. That couldn't hide him. That's right. That's right. Some of them went and got married again, but that couldn't hide it. Amen. When you run up on God's word, you can't hide long can't as you hide. read. No. All right, hold that thought. Question. Yes, sir. Hey, brother. Uh, one of the things on marriage that we run into down here in Georgia that I have, and I personally ask preachers about this, is that they say, well, when a person gets born again, then all things have become new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And even though you confront them with this, they'd rather stay in the darkness and be deceived instead of having to go back and tell that brother and sister that he just married wrongfully and he knows it. That you know, Excellent statement. Let me work on that. This is what preacher yeah, said. Before. Preacher says this. Preacher said, when you was a sinner and got married mm -hmm. and one of you come to Christ, yes. the one that came to Christ can divorce. Right the sinner companion right. and get himself a new Christian. Amen. You old perverted liar. In the book of 1 Corinthians. Ain't no Bible talk like that, you liar. That's right. That's right. Let's get some Bible to back this up now. 1 Corinthians chapter I'm 7. I'm telling you, a false prophet is the worst thing to follow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we're at verse 12. I want all you preachers that's listening and watching all around, because we, we're live tonight, internationally. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> and I want all you adultery-loving preachers mm. and you uh, divorce-preaching preachers yeah. who, who, who's so burning in your sad flesh mm. uh, that you want to trade your good year in for Michelin. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because you fellas know the treads is getting too low. Amen. You got to be a child of hell just to follow a man who tell you, preach, you can divorce. Yeah. Any preacher that preach, you can divorce, you of the devil. Of the devil. Here now. First Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 12. All right. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Give chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 7, and we're starting at verse 12. The rest speak I, not the Lord. Not the Lord. If any brother. If any brother. Not the wife that believeth not. Uh oh, all right. Now, when it says if any, if it says any brother, he's talking about a brother in the church. Right. Huh? That's so right. if any brother. Hath a wife that believeth not. An unbeliever is someone that's not saved. That's right. So if any brother who is born again, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, mm -hmm. and he got a wife who's an unbeliever, meaning she's a sinner. And she be pleased to dwell with him. And she wants to stay there. Let him not put her away. Oh, no. Bishop said I can get rid of her and get me a saved one. Let him not put her away. Because you better read that right. Bishop told me I can divorce her and get a Christian. Let him not put her no, away. No, ain't what. What Bishop said. Amen. Bishop said I can divorce her and get some new meat. Let him not put her away. That ain't what Bishop said. <laughs> Bishop said I can get rid of that turkey and get some prime plump chicken. Let him not put her away. <laughs> Amen. Bible, Bible says, if any brother hath a wife, if any brother have a wife that believeth not, that's not saved, and she be pleased to dwell and she with want him, to stay there, let him not put her then away. God did not tell you get rid of her. And the woman, and the woman which hath an husband, if you got a husband that believeth not, who's a sinner, and if he be pleased to and dwell he with want her, to stay there, let her not leave him. The Bible ain't tell you to divorce him and get you a Christian. Let her not leave him. A bunch of, you see how the Bible contradicts preachers? Amen. 
Amen. I want to soak you while I have you here. Amen. All right, question. Come on, my sister. I just had a question. What Bible are you reading from? <laughs> Not Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiastes. There's Cuss. many. The mistake that people have made, they thought it was just 66 books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is more than 66 books in the Bible. That's right. In your 66 books, let me show you in your Bible where the Bible talks about other books. Let's in, go. Let's just take a trail. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21. Follow me in the book of Numbers, chapter, chapter 21. 21. A lot of folks say Pastor Dylan wrote his own Bible. He ain't wrote nothing. No. <laughs> here, here the old man now. Not even the Bible itself give you all the information about Jesus. That's right. And I'm a proof to you that the Bible said so. That's right. All right, let me show you in the Bible where the Bible, I'm going to show you within the 66 books that talk about other books. I had someone tell me, well, if the other books was true, why, why didn't the uh, Old Testament talk about them? The Old Testament didn't mention the book of Romans. Why you read it? That's right. That's right. The Old Testament didn't mention the book of, Ph of Philemon. Why mm -hmm. you read it? That's right. Mm-hmm. Talk like a fool. Amen. All right, come on, let's go to work real quick. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21, and we're at verse 14. Follow me. Wherefore, it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord. It is said in the book of the war of the Lord. What he did in the Red Sea. Now, everything that was done in the Red Sea is not just written in Exodus That's right. or in the Old Testament. That's right. It's also written in the book of the war of the Lord. What he did in the Red what Sea. What he did in the Red Sea. And in the brooks of Arnon. And also, and, and where? In the brooks of Arnon. And in the brooks of Arnon. All right. Now, in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 12. Follow me. And we're at verse 15. Yes. Now the acts of Re Rehoboam. Now the acts of Rehoboam. First and last. First and last. Are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet? Uh oh. It's written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet. And. Y'all never heard this before. That's right. And. And of Ido the seer. Oh, it's also written in the book of Ido the seer. Concerning genealogy. Concerning genealogy. And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Yes, keep traveling. Now in the book of First Chronicles chapter Follow 29. Me. Listen at this. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 29. First Chronicles chapter 29. And verse 29. And verse 29. Now the acts of David the king first and last. The acts of David the king first and last. Behold, they are written. They are written. In the book of Samuel the seer. That we we know about Samuel the seer, don't we? That's right. What else? And, and in the book of Nathan the prophet. Oh, you knew about the prophet Nathan. Mm -hmm. But did you know Nathan wrote a book? That's right. <laughs> That's right. What else? And, and in the book of Gad the seer. Oh, you knew that Jacob had a son named Gad. That's where the, that's where the Gadites come from. That's right. But did you know Gad wrote a book? That's right. You got the book of Gad. Now in the book of 2 Samuel. And they say I make this stuff up. No, we ain't making up nothing. It's in your Bible. That's right. Come on, son. Now in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1. And we're starting verse 17. All right. And David lamented with lamentation over Saul. David cried over Saul. And over Jonathan his son. And over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them, he also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Yeah. Behold, it is written. It is written. In the book of Jasher. In the book of Jasher. We have the book of Jasher. That's right. Yeah? That's right. All right, keep traveling. Now let's get the New Testament, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show you that not even the New Testament give you all the information about Jesus. Now in the book of St. John, chapter 20. Not even the new. So I want to say it well. Jesus' words is in red letters, you fool. <laughs> That's right. Think the red letters is just the words of Jesus? Amen. Genesis 1, 1, Revelation to the last verse are all the words of Jesus. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead, take God. What did he say? Now in the book of St. John, chapter 21, and we'll start at verse 24. Notice John 21. Starting at verse 24. And begin at verse 24. This is the disciple which testifies of these things and, and wrote these things. Yes. And we know that his testimony is true. Oh, yes, we do. And there are also many other things. Here, here. I want you to listen closely. Amen. There are many other things. Which Jesus did. Wait a minute. There's what? There are also many other things which Jesus did. What happened? The which, if they should be written, every one. If they should be written. Every one. Because all of it is not written. That's right. If they should be written, every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. I told you. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I told you. Amen. Glory to God. Many other things. You got to remember. That's right. You lose 18 years of information. Yeah. 
many other things. Drop off at the age of 12. Next thing you know, you pick them up about 30 or about 33. Yeah. Those years. Many other things. The Bible speaks plain. There are also many other things this is which good Bible Jesus school did. Tonight. That's right. There's many other things which Jesus did. That Jesus did. The which if they should be written every one. If all the information about Jesus, not even this Bible could hold it. No. Listen to what Pastor John says. If they should be written every one. How, how much is it? I suppose, I suppose that even the world that itself. Even the world. The world. The world. The world. Itself. John said the world. That's right. The whole world itself, itself could not contain the it books. It won't be able to hold the books. That should be written. Of the things that Jesus did. Amen. That's right. That's Bible right. just give you little itty bitty information. That's right. Of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. That's all. Amen. A little itty bitty information. That's right. Oh, not even the world, the world itself can hold. Could not contain the books Lord, that should be written. God the things that Jesus did. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Who had the hand up? Yes, sister. Amen. I have a question about the pagan holiday. Yes. Yes. Mm. Well, buying gifts. Or receiving them, buying them. Yes, it will. Yeah. That's right, brother. Let, 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 consider this. I don't smoke. But if someone asks me, do I got a light for a cigarette and give it to them, I'm strengthening the hands of evildoers. So if the Bible in the, in the 10th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, of Jeremiah, Jeremiah. tell us don't learn the way of the heathen right. and the heathen go to the forest and cut down the tree. Right. Now I want to say to all you Christmas lovers, because y'all in the South and you folk in the South love Christmas. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bunch of heathens. Amen. You're a bunch of heathens. That's right. I want to say to all of Georgia, you're a bunch of heathens. That's right. Yeah, the Bible, I get you, young man. The Bible have never said at no time that Jesus was born December 25th. No. No time. No time. No time. Let's get to 10th chapter book of Jeremiah quickly. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we'll start at verse 1. I don't have time to read the whole chapter, but what we will read is also dealing with idolatry in this chapter also because one thing about the tree it has become an idol that's right and people idolize that tree yeah but there's no other time of year that people fulfill this until the 25th of december that's right and all you parents that tell your children that there's some three or four or five hundred pound man in a red suit with big black boots coming down your chimney giving out uh presents Look, why don't you show your children you love them and stop lying to them? That's right. I want all my lying fathers and lying mothers tell your children the truth. Sit them all down. Amen. Tell them, look, all y'all come here. Henry, Henry, Sally, Cynthia, George, Fred, Bill, Melvin, all of y'all come here and sit down. sit down. And just tell them, there ain't no Santa. Right. Tell your children, look, forgive me. I lied. Amen. Me and your daddy lied. When you set milk and cookies out, your greedy daddy ate the cookie and your thirsty mama drunk the milk. That's right. Am I right, I said? <laughs> Christmas is of the devil. Yeah. Christmas is of the devil. Amen. Christmas is a spell from hell that make you feel well. Give me the 10th chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're starting in verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Hear you ye the word. loving heathens. That's right. Hear ye the word. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto no, you. No, hear ye the word that Pastor Janet speak to you. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto Don't you. Don't bring me in it. You bunch of heathens. That's right. Don't bring me in. No. You that's going to Macy's and, amen, Lord and Taylor's and shopping online, Amazon, just singing. Take the horse with Fala la. It's on your computer. Fala la 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 la. Tis the season to be. And then you get in debt. And now you want to beg King Jesus. <laughs> 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 Am I right, I said? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Amen. 
They want to beg King Jesus to get them out of debt. That's right. Look at the Jewish community. They don't believe in no Christmas. There's not a real Jew that believe in the Torah, yeah. which is the Old Testament, that celebrate Christmas. Yeah. But the Jews will open up that business and take your money. There's not a real Muslim who's dedicated to Islam believe in Christmas. That's right. But even some Muslims will leave their business open so they can get your money. Amen. The only one believe in Christmas is these blind devil deceased heathens that pose as Christians. That's right. <laughs> Amen. You bunch of heathens. Heathens. Amen. Amen. I want this to be good for all of you that already got your tree set up. Yeah. Use a heathen. <laughs> You're nothing but a heathen. Your mama is a heathen. Right. Your daddy is a heathen. Your grandmama is a heathen. All your children are little heathens. Little heathens. You talking to me, Pastor Jennings? Yes, you heathen. Amen. You are heathen. That's a heathen. That goes for any preachers up here now. Yes, it is. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. If any of you fellas got Christmas trees, you are heathen. That's a heathen. You're not a preacher, you are heathen. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. Jeremiah chapter 2. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Follow me in your Bible. That's right. Old, young, middle-aged heathens. Heathens. Follow me in your Bible. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're starting in verse 1. Come on. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of you Israel. You claim you're a Christian. What's wrong with this scripture? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. What? Learn not the way of the heathen. Wait a minute. If it says don't learn the way of the heathen, somebody's teaching it. That's right. For you to learn it, somebody got to teach it. That's right. And what the Lord is doing, advising you not to learn. Learn not the way of the Jesus heathen. Jesus said, do not after they works. That's right. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, <coughs> and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. What is it? For the heathen are dismayed at them. Tell us what the heathens in Georgia do. For the customs of the people are vain. They are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Oh, yes. Amen. You ain't got to cut it now. They cut it for you and line it up on a corner. Line it up. Or put it in a flatbed tractor trailer. That's right. And then the heathens pull over in their car and give the, give the heathen that's selling trees <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars right. for a tree. Then the tree is longer than the car. Yeah. <laughs> Father got a fight with it to bring it in the heathen's house. That's right. His heathen wife come running to him. Mm. Honey, you got the tree? Yes, my loving heathen. <laughs> Eh? Go ahead. And the heathen husband and the heathen wife, she help him drag the tree in. Then the little heathen children come running down the steps. <laughs> Daddy, that's a beautiful tree. Beautiful tree. Preach it. Put on that King Cole in the background. That's nice roasting. <laughs> on an open fire. <laughs> that, 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 that way. That, that. <laughs> That way, the, Christ, the Christmas spirit, that Christmas spirit really get in them. You don't, you don't slap your wife around all week. You don't cuss her around all week. And then when Christmas, new, when Christmas Eve come, mm. now you all nice. Yeah. That's a spell from hell that got you. That's right. All right, what the Holy Ghost said. Well, the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain. For one cut us a tree out of the forest. And? The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Look at the detail. Only they do this on Christmas. They deck it with silver and with gold. Wait a minute. All right. Amen. Look at you and your wife and your children. Yeah. Getting out all the stuff out the boxes. Honey, it's in the attic. <laughs> I can't find, it's in the attic, in the corner. He coming down with old dusty boxes with the same old junk. That's right. And or she ordered some new stuff online. Mm -hmm. And they all just decking the tree. Decking. Children, come on, we go, this is our family time. That's right. Children coming, oh, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> 
poetic god, you bunch of heathens. heathens. All of you around the tree just happy. And they deck it with what? They deck it with silver and with gold. There is no other celebration but Christmas. But Christmas. All right. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. You know good and well it ain't no deer that can fly. You know a lie lasts for years. Yes, it will. Yes, it does. When, when you come into the knowledge of the truth, our children don't participate in these fake Christian plays. We don't have mangers on the church. That's right. We don't have mangers on our house. That's right. We don't have no reeves on our church doors. Yeah. We don't have no reeves on the house. Yes. We don't have Christmas dinners. Yeah. Am I ready, sir? Amen. You're a bunch of heathens. Heathens. You're nothing but a heathen. That's right. Anything that endorses that Christmas lie and you participate in it, you're a heathen. heathen. Yes, sir. That's right. No Christmas dinners. No. You ain't going to a Christmas dinner. Uh -huh. I don't care if your in-laws have it. That's right. Either you're going to stand for God or you're going to bow to your in-laws. Amen. 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 Little weak men. Well, Pastor Jenner, you know, me and my wife been done and since we've been married. And, you know, if I back out of it now, you know, I, it may cause a conflict between, between me and my wife. Straighten up. Straighten up. What's the matter with you? Man up. That's right. That's right. Preach it, man. Preach it. Go ahead. Who is your God, Jesus or your wife? Go ahead. Okay. You know, Pastor Jen, you know, if I don't go, you know, it may cause such a conflict, you yeah. know, then, you know, the bed may kind of get cold. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Many times your bed dictate the pulpit, you's a false prophet anyway. That's right. And ain't no woman hips, no woman breast, no woman thighs mm. shall have an influence on this pulpit. That's right. Only thing supposed to run up here is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Am I right, I say? You bunch of heathens. Heathen. Heathens and cowards. Amen. Amen. Shut that Christmas dinner down. Yeah. You ain't going Christmas to your in-laws for Christmas and they ain't coming to your house. That's right. How you gonna tell them that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December and yet you got a big Christmas spread? <laughs> Holding hands at the table. Let us pray and thank God for this meal. Lord Jesus, we know it ain't your birthday, but. But. <laughs> But, you old faker, that's, that's all you right. doing is keeping up the tradition of sinners. Man, you got to be all out for God and stop this plan. You might as well just stop it. Stop it. Come on, son. They deck it with silver and with gold. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with, with hammers nails that it and hammer not. So it don't move. Yep. It's upright as the palm tree. But speak not. They speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot <coughs> go. All right, give me that book of John. John. I believe the second chapter second of uh, chapter. First, first Epistle John. of John, mm -hmm. and uh, begin at verse 14. First John chapter 2, and we're going to start reading at verse and 14. And then when you're done with that, give me Leviticus 10.10. 10. That's right. Uh -huh. first, first John chapter 2, we're at verse 14. Yes. I have written unto you, Father. I have written unto you, Father. Because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Because you known him that's from the beginning. I have written unto you, young I've men. I have written unto you, young men. Because ye are strong. You're strong. And the word of God abideth in you. You young men got to be strong enough to denounce heathenism. That's right. We don't accept gifts. We don't give gifts. Right. We don't even accept the Christmas bonus. Amen. Because it endorsed heathenism. That's right. Go ahead. Bible says he that gather riches and not by right dies a fool. Anytime you get money in any way and the way you got that money violate that Bible, you transgress. That's right. That's right. We don't bake cakes and all that stuff so, so to bring it to the job for the Christmas party. For the party. We don't participate in Christmas Pollyannas That's right. at the job or in school. Amen. We don't take our children to Christmas plays. Yeah. Our children are not in Christmas plays. My son cannot be in the play. And he's supposed to be Jesus. God is not mocked. That's right. Yes, sir. 
Anytime your son is in the play, the moment he said he Jesus, he blasphemed against the son of man. Amen. You know why? Jesus is not a little boy. No. God ain't marked. No. Let's come on back to Bible. That's right. You ain't going to come back to Bible. You might as well stay home. Yeah. You're going to go to hell anyway. Why Amen. pay your way? Go free. <laughs> Come on, son. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, uh -huh. and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. There's not a half a scripture that says Jesus was born not December 25th. Point. Just like there's no scripture that says Jesus rose on Easter. That's right. You egg liars. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lie hatch right out your egg. <laughs> that's right. Two days, that's guaranteed, that's where right. devils will come together. Amen. Christmas and Easter. And Easter. Eight foot rabbits. If there's a listen, any rabbit that large in Georgia, kill them and eat them. <laughs> Church is sponsoring Easter egg hunts. Yeah, that's paganism. paganism. Eggs and rabbits don't have nothing to do with the resurrection. That's right. Bunch of heathens. heathens. I want you to get this. First you, you judge yourself and say, are you a heathen tonight? Amen. You judge yourself. Yeah. All right. First John 2, now at verse 15. Real quick. Love not the world. Uh-oh. You mm -hmm. hear God talking? Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. If any man love the world. What you mean? Those things that God is against. If we are the children of God, we are not to pursue the things in the world that God is against. That's right. We don't go after Christmas and Easter and clubbing and partying and gambling and shooting dice and playing cards and shooting pools and um, being part of college sororities That's right. and out there twerking and all that folly. Love not the world. No so-called praise dances in the church where music play and a bunch of children get up on the pulpit and just dance, a bunch of sinners. Love not the world. The Lord said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. prayer. How in the world are you going to do the same dance in the street and then come in the church and do the same thing and say you born again? You ain't nothing but a Bible totem cross wearing sinner. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a sinner. That's right. We have took the house of God and made it a playground. That's right. Music playing, a bunch of boys and girls. Guess up here. Yeah. Come on, praise dancers. Praise dancers. You like a bunch of prostitutes and pimps. Amen. And the preacher's a poor excuse as a preacher that let it go on. That's right. Church supposed to represent God. Yeah. You don't need the Holy Ghost or a revelation to understand this. When you go to the club, you expect to see church. No. When you go to church, you shouldn't expect to see club. That's right. That's right. I get you, my brother. Come on. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If you you beer guzzlers and wine drinkers and go to dinner and drink our toes and all that. And they try to justify themselves and say, well, Jesus had wine at the marriage of Canaan. Where did he drink it? That's right. That's right. Where did he drink it? Amen. Amen. Notice how quiet that it got. <laughs> where, where did he drink it? Where did he, it at? he turned water into wine, and you don't read where he drunk the wine that he turned water into. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You drinking, guzzling Christ Christians. Guzzling. You Jack Daniel loving Christians. Uh, you Christians got a beer, got a bar in your house. Yeah. Beer in your refrigerator. Yeah. Come to church on your way to church smoking. Then when you, and then when you park, full your mouth full of lightsabers and halls and tit tat, and chewing gum. Yeah. Cigarette sucking preachers. You see, most people never been taught about living holy. And when you've never been taught how to really live really? holy, you think a so-called Christian lifestyle. Go to church whenever the church doors is open. Pray once in a while, you know. Donate clothes to the Red Cross or Salvation Army. Read a few verses that don't hurt you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
And you say that's a good Christian life. You haven't even got started. That's right. <laughs> My God, man, in order to live a holy life, you must be taught holiness. Amen. And to be taught holiness, you got to be taught the doctrine that Jesus gave his apostles. That's right. Anybody can donate to the Red Cross. Yeah. There's a holy standard in God. Amen. Not this modern rubbish <laughs> that people call church. It ain't nothing but a club with a cross on it. That's right. It's organized crime. That's all. They organize their wickedness behind a cross and a tower and a bell. <laughs> That's right. All right. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither, Neither the things that are in the world. Look at what you love. Mm. Marvin Gaye. <laughs> when you have, listen, hear me. When, when you have a wedding, when you have a wedding, when God's people have a wedding, you can't be playing no worldly music. No, no. Why in the world that sister marching down an aisle on a love song mm. sung by Marvin Gaye, Teddy Pendergrass, James Brown, you ain't nothing but a sinner. That's right. Go ahead, man. You supposed to be a same sanctified woman and getting married? Why your chest showing? Why your back is out? Go ahead. This is church. And you're going to throw a garter and some other man catch it and a photographer's up your dress while some other man got his hands on your thighs. That's right. You just got married and you're already acting like a prostitute. Preach it, man. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. All right, listen. Amen. A holy wedding, ain't nobody throwing no garters. There ain't no photographer up your clothes. Go ahead. It ain't drinking no toast. That's right. It ain't no worldly love music. No. Ain't no dancing, bumping, and grinding. Amen. The preacher don't kiss no bride. And a bride don't kiss her new husband because the only kiss that's allowed in God's house is a holy kiss. Holy kiss. There ain't no exception for no marriage in church. That's right. Your tongue ain't got no business in your wife's mouth. In church. In church. In church. Amen. What's the matter with you? In church? In the church. I mean, you act like it's not even God's house. You just up there. That's right. You in church? In the church. You do your tongue dance at home. Amen. But in church, holy, holy the kiss. only kiss that's permitted in church is a holy kiss. Holy kiss. It ain't no lust involved. No. Preach it. Holy Christ. All right, listen to what I'm telling you. Go ahead. I told you the churches done went totally backward. And the preachers just sit quiet because their pockets have got fat from money. And which made the preachers like lazy, greedy dogs. Yeah. They can see wrong right in front of their face. They say, oh, well, no, that's the what they want to do. They do it. Go ahead, Bob. That's what they say. When we put it, it ain't, it ain't no half naked <laughs> gowns back all out showing your cleavage. Not that. No exchanging rings because the Bible speak against the it's wearing rings. of gold. That's right. Pastor Jennings, I notice you don't wear a ring. How folks know you married? Act like it. Amen. That's all. Act like it. That's right. Are you that foolish to think a ring make a man faithful? No. Never had. Man, a bounce on a woman with his ring finger hanging over her head. Yes, He'll grab will. her head with the ring finger. That's right. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. Are you listening to the old man? Go ahead, brother. Read quick. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Worldly music in a wedding. Mm. <laughs> You're a bunch of sinners. Sinners. 
in a wedding. Can I have the first dance? It's supposed to be saved people. That's right. That's right. A party, a party. in God's house. <laughs> That's right. Music just playing. Everybody just jumping, rocking yeah. back and forth. <laughs> and then on Sunday, God's not dead. He's yet alive. I can feel him in my head. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. You all right. hypocrite. You a Christian fraud. That's a fraud. You a faker. That's right. Preach it, man. We don't change that Bible for no event, for no ceremony. That's right. The first thing that's implemented at all times is that book. If you got to change the book to have something going on, don't have it. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love it. Yeah. We're not moving. Mm -mm, no, man. No, no. I don't care what man come from. And I, I hear from thousands of preachers all the time. Pastor Dennis, I want to be a part of First Church. I said, all right, I'll get a chance to talk to you, interview you and whatnot. And we'll talk about what you, but I ain't changing. Not changing. No, sir, I don't care if you're a multi-millionaire. To me, you ain't got the word of God in you, you poor. <laughs> That's right. God, man, you not only poor, you're broke. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, thank God. The greatest riches is God's word. That's it. The Bible says we have this treasure. And earthly vessels, that's hallelujah. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I'm laboring to bring the church back to the way the Bible have it. Forget all this mega church garbage that have influenced the churches. Hollywood took over churches. Entertainment influenced churches. You want to be like celebrities and Hollywood and actors and actresses. They mean more to church people than Jesus. Than Jesus. Yeah. If Tyler Perry say something, the world will bow to it. Yeah, Jesus say something, the world fight it. That's right. That's true. That's true. Am I right? I said. Amen. Oprah say something, the world bow to it. Yeah. Jesus say something, the world cuss Jesus out. Yes, it will. Go ahead, man. We gonna put God back in the place where he originally was. First, he said, I'm Alpha, Hula, and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. No Hollywood actor, no Hollywood actress, no entertainer should have influence in God's house. If the word of God ain't good enough to run God's house, right. shut your church down. Shut it down. Yeah. Might as well just shut it down because you're going to go to hell anyway. Oh, yeah. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. What? The lust of the flesh. Shooting pool. Lust of the flesh. Rolling dice. Mm -hmm. Playing the lottery. Mm. You bunch of heathens. Amen. You get your ticket, oh eternal God, please. <laughs> Bless this, put your anointing. <laughs> you fool. That's a fool. God's people gambling, playing the lottery. What's the matter with you? Amen. Don't you hear the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature? Yeah. Old things are past. What's so new about you? You out here playing the lottery. That's right. You're a sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a sinner. Amen. Come on, son. For all that is in the world. Lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. Pride of life. Is not of the Father. When you got those deep cut necks showing your breasts right and your right. back all out. Splits all in your clothes showing your thighs. Here's your dress and skirt. It's no longer than my jacket. Then when you sit down, you trying to pull it and it ain't got nowhere to go. That's right. Preacher's wife old enough to be my grandmama with a mini skirt on. Toenails painted red, fingernails painted red. Got hair from Walgreen, eyebrow arch. Hair from Walgreen and eyelashes from CBS. Amen. Give me the Book of Kings, quickly. Jezebel. Jezebel, amen. Holiness. 
Follow me in your Bible. Amen. You remember old folk used to tell their son and their daughters, you better stay away from that girl. She looked like Jezebel. Right, yeah. What do you thought that mean? Yeah. Give me that book of Kings if I'm correct. 10th mm -hmm. chapter. Just see if I saw what I want. Or about the ninth chapter. Come on, Simon, because the clock is ticking. I ain't got time for you to be looking. First, uh, Second Kings chapter 9. All right. Second Kings chapter 9, and we'll start reading in verse 22. Read fast. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel. Ha! So long as the whoredom of your mama Jezebel. And her witchcraft, and her are, witchcraft so many. are so many. And Joram turned his hands and fled. Yes. And said to Ahaziah, yes. there is treachery, O Ahaziah. And let's see what Jezebel looked like when Jehu came in town. Amen. Let's just skip that quickly now because the clock is moving. Amen. <coughs> in the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. All right. Chapter 9. And we're down reading at verse 30. Come on, son. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel. When Jehu came to Jezreel. Jezebel heard of it. Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face. Who painted her? Wait a minute. Who painted their face? Jezebel. Who painted their face? Jezebel. You don't find a holy woman in the Bible wore face paint, which is today called makeup. That's right. God didn't make your lips that color. Why do you? Amen. God didn't make your cheeks that color. Why do you? Yeah. God didn't make your eyebrows like that. Why do you? That's right. What are you teaching, Pastor Jennings? We're teaching all of our women of every race. Love the way God made you. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Holy women don't wear our brown pencil, our line shadow. Don't wear wigs. Don't wear fake ponytails. Don't wear hair extensions. Don't wear fake nails. Don't wear none of that stuff. Amen. Holy women don't wear that stuff. That's right. Don't wear splits. Don't wear none of that. Amen. Don't wear sheer clothing advertising your underclothes. Yeah. That's why it's called underclothes. They are under your clothes. That's right. <laughs> huh? Amen. Sometimes women wear a blouse cut down the hair showing their cleavage. And then the brother in church looking, then you want you ready to call him a pervert. <laughs> really? Then why are you advertising your trick or treats? <laughs> why are you advertising your trick or treats? That's right. Do you know it's the nature of a man to look there? That's right. Oh, this is old-fashioned holders. Oh, yeah. Old-fashioned holders, you find the old mothers with their dresses almost to their ankles. Yeah. And they teach the young women the same thing. Sometimes old women say, huh, I ain't wearing my dresses down to my ankles like an old woman. And you got a singing citizen's car? What else are you? What's the matter with you? That's right. Why would an old woman complain? about having a long dress. In fact, you should be getting on these young women. Tell them to close that split up. Go get that dress down longer. So a lot of these young women don't respect you old women because you out there just like them. Your ankle chains on, fake hair, fingernails all painting up. That's right. And you out there want to be your sister's, your daughter's sister. These young girls need a mother. Amen. You want to be out there shaking your behind with your daughter and she's out there bumping and grinding with her boyfriend and you bumping and grinding with her boyfriend. Amen. 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 How in the world are you going to put these young girls in check and tell and run all these boys away from your house when you got all these old devils coming to your house? That's true. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Amen. Hear this now. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel. Real quick. Jezebel heard of it. Jezebel heard it. And she painted her face. She painted her face. And tied her hair. She got her hair all done up. And looked out at a window. And looked out at the window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate. What did he say? She said, had Zimrod peace. Had Zimrod peace. Who slew his master. Uh -huh. And he lifted up his face to the window. And said what? And said, who is on my side who? Here's Jezebel got all decked up. And thus she can kind of influence old brother Jehu. Got her makeup all on, hair all done up. 
and uh, looking all nice, and Jehu said, he looked up there, hey, hey, who up there on the Lord's side? And they looked out to him two or three units. They looked out the window, two or three units. And he said, throw her down. Throw her out the window. Amen. So they threw her down. <laughs> Man, Jezebel ain't get all decked up to get thrown out the window. No. That goes to show you Jezebel didn't have an effect on Jehu. That's right. But she knocked off many, many prophets. Many prophets. Oh, man, Je Jezebel was a strong woman. Oh, yeah. That's the way some women do when they come in church. They get all dutied up. Thank God. You ever remember old, old times? You ever notice a lot of churches used to have a rail going across the front? Do you know what that was for? The rail going across the front of the, of the front row of the churches was to keep the preachers from seeing the woman's legs. But where if the women are taught right, you don't need no rail. That's right. A lot of these preachers can't preach because they get distracted. Yeah, they do. Dresses at your knee, he gets looking. Well, I tell you who. Yeah. Yeah. When Jesus comes, who? I saw up. Uh, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> but brother, when it ran up on Jehu, Jehu ain't put that mess no mind. Oh, Throw her down! Throw her down! My God, she got thrown out the window. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the some wall. Some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. And on the horses. And on the horses. And he trolled her underfoot. And he trolled underfoot. Underfoot. All right, let me get this young man right here. And then the last one to be this gentleman back there. All right, son. After you Good question. After you repent of your sins and are baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, the next step is you must be taught how to seek the Holy Ghost. That's right. I just can't tell you, well, tarry. You can't tarry, but you ain't been taught how to tarry. That's right. Give me the eighth chapter mm -hmm. of the book of Acts of the Apostles. the Apostles. Glory to God. Acts chapter 8. Eh? And we'll start at verse 14. Real quick. Now when, the, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard. When the eunuch was reading up in his chariot. Acts chapter 8. There was an, a, an evangelist named Philip. Philip. That's right. And Philip, the spirit, saw yeah. the sincere eunuch. Yeah who was the treasurer of Queen Candace, queen of Ethiopia, That's right. was reading from the book of Isaiah or Esaias. That's right. He asked the eunuch. Then the spirit said unto Philip. Give chapter and verse. In the book of Acts chapter 8 and we're at verse 29. What is it? Then the spirit said unto Philip. Spirit said to Philip. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Read fast. And Philip ran thither to him. Yes, the Philip ran. You see, that's what a real man of God do because he know reading the Bible it's, reading is good, but if you don't understand, reading will make you more confused. Or, some folks say, well, I read the Bible from cover to cover. So what? If you don't understand it, what good is you? You can read all you want. That's right. That's why you need a preacher to teach it. That's right. You can read all you want, but without teaching, you read may end up more confused than you were before you got started. That's right. I want you to listen closely here. And Philip ran thither to him. And said what? And heard him read the prophet Isaiah. Yes. And said, understandest thou what thou readest? You see? Do you understand what you read? And he said, how can I? How can I? Except some man should guide you me. You got to have a preacher to guide you. Yeah. And that preacher will teach you what to do after you repent, after you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They'll teach you how to seek the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you now how to seek the Holy Ghost. After you repent of your sins, mean you go before God and ask God to forgive you. And you must mean it from the depths of your heart. And you feel that remorse in your heart. Then you're ready to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> after you come out of the water, you will be introduced how to walk to a new life. And the way you're taught how to walk a new life, you're taught the teachings of Jesus. Right. You will not be able to master all what Jesus taught overnight, right. but line upon line, precept upon precept, we'll teach you here a little and there a little. Gradually, you will begin to develop and learn how to seek the Lord. How do I seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost? Before I go before God in prayer, I first must come before him and humble myself. That's right. I must go before God with the humble mind and the humble heart. 
There is no incorrect grammar in prayer. Because when you truly go before God, you're asking God from the depths of your heart what you want, what you need. But you must always be humble. If my people, the Bible said, if my people which are called my name shall humble themselves, humble themselves, then what? And pray. You don't pray first and then humble. You must be humble first and then pray so you can get an answer. That's right. That's right. When you truly seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, don't try to pray like somebody else. Don't try to seek the Lord like somebody else because your relationship with God is between you and God. When you seek God face with humility and sincerity, in the right time, the Lord will answer your prayer and fill you with the Holy Ghost. How? Don't let, don't let nobody ever tell you you got the Holy Ghost. Uh-uh. Don't let no one tell you, oh, I heard you speak. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, no, no. You have to know it for yourself. Amen. When you receive the genuine Holy Ghost, see, the Holy Ghost is a gift. And the Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. And it comes down from the Father of lights, which is the God of direction, of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. When you truly know you have the Holy Ghost, you will speak in another tongue, which means in another language, as the Spirit give utterance. In other words, what you mean? As the spirit of utterance, the Holy Ghost will utter another language out of you that you never spoke before in your life. That's right. Now, when God speak in another tongue through someone, and if there's no interpreter, the Bible said God edifieth that one. But if there is an interpreter, then that God of heaven is edifying the whole church. The church. But if there is no interpreter, then God is edifying that one. Mm. Don't ever let nobody come tell you, oh, you got it. Uh-uh. Mm. Wait. Wait. Until you know for yourself. That's right. And if you're unsure, don't profess it. Don't claim it. Mm-hmm. Keep seeking the Lord for it. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 You keep the Lord for it. Amen. And you will know it. You will know it for yourself. For yourself. Last question, my brother back there. Pastor. Uh, yes, sir. Pastor, this question is for uh, for my wife. Yes, sir. And myself, kind of. Uh-huh. We came from Atlanta, Georgia. One. And, um, you know, we attending a lot of church, not a lot of church, but the church that I'm attending right now is a Pentecostal church, Church uh-huh. of God. And they doing everything that the world is doing, Christmas, yeah. Easter. And she time. wants to know is what a you know, what a, what is she gonna do now? What are we gonna do now? Because everybody's doing it. And I, I told her that we're not everybody, we're of God. But answer that for me and for her, uh, Pastor. Yes. Amen. Now, Jesus said, do not after their works. If we are the light of the world, then we that are God's people are not to follow the example of the world. In fact, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Now, let me show you what kind of mind you got to have. Give me the second chapter of the book of Philippians quick. Philippians. When you got the right mind, Philippians. you don't worry about what others are doing. That's right. When you got the right mind, you don't care what nobody else is doing. That's right. Listen. Philippians chapter 2, and we're at verse 5. And then from there, I want Corinthians, Corinthians. to come out. Come on, yes. son. Let this mind be in you. Now, let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. If I got the mind of Jesus, then I ain't going to be out there doing what you're doing. That's right. Neither will I let the deeds of the world influence my actions. Right. So you may ask, Pastor Dennis, you know, your guys in Atlanta? And you ask, what should you do? What should you do? Because the churches are doing anything. Mm-hmm. Notice the book of Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and read verse 17. Let's see what the Bible said do. 
Wherefore come out from among them. No, stay there and fuss with them. Come out from among them. Stay there and argue with them. Wherefore come out from among them. And be a part of it. And be ye separate. Saith who? Saith the Lord. What else? And touch not the unclean thing. What else? And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. You shall be my what? And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be. And ye shall be my sons. Wait, shall be my what? My sons. And, my brother that acts and, and daughters. And his wife. Saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. 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 We, we have a work in Atlanta. We have a work in Atlanta. Before you leave, one of my brothers here, either Brother Nicholas Brown or uh, Brother Wick, they can give you the uh, they can give you the address. They can give you the address to uh, where they meet, where we meet at in Atlanta, Georgia. Another question? Yes, sir. Yes, come out from among them. Where you go, leave, leave the false church you're in. That's right. Repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ if you have it. And come follow the truth of the gospel. We'll give you the address to First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in Atlanta where you get fed some good grub right. so you don't have to go to hell. Amen. That was, that, that was my last question. I try to get the rest on tomorrow. Let's give me Acts 2, 38. Let's Acts, close out on this. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. All right, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. That goes from <laughs> pulpit down. Amen. If you bow your head and raise your hands, you're not saved. Right. I ain't going to say I'm sorry to disappoint you. I mean to tell you. That's right. You pray the sinner's prayer, you're not saved. You're still a sinner. Amen. You join the church? Uh-uh. God church is something you can't join. You got to be born into this. That's right. This is, if you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're not baptized right. right. You got to go back in water and be baptized over the right way. Right. Right. Don't you hear the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Right. Listen at this now. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Listen. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Ah. Uh, Georgia, that's what you got to do. Repent. Do what? Repent. And after you repent, what else? And be baptized. How much of Georgia? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. No, bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Remission means removing. That's how you get your sins washed away. And what did God promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you've never been born again like that, you're still a sinner tonight. Right. Now, if anybody here wants to get right and really want to get their self right and don't want to go to hell, if you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet tonight. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That goes for preachers too. If there's any preachers ain't baptized, come on. If there's anybody back there, if there's anybody back there, tell them to come to the front. If there's anybody back there who want to be baptized, tell them to come on to the front. Amen. Tell them, come on to the front. Come on. Tell them, come on. Tell them, come on. Everybody in the back that wants to be baptized, come on. Come on. Glory to God. Come on. Every day I want to be baptized. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Go front. Come on. Come on. Every day I want to be baptized in the back. Come on. Let them go. Come on. Y'all spread on now. Come on! Come on! Come on! Repent! Repent! And be baptized! Repent! 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 Oh, God. Got water?
water in the pool. All right, we gonna ask. Show, show us where the clothes at. So where's Brother Minister Nick and Brother Minister Witt? Let both of y'all do the baptizing. Yes, sir. All right. We got, we got clothes. Just show, show. Just show the sisters where they got to go, and the brothers where they got to go. Back here in the rear. That's first room down. All right, where's, where's, where's my sisters from First Church? Raise your hand. Where's my sisters from First Church? All right, Sherry. And Sister Hannah, y'all come on up and give the sisters a hand. Nick went. Emmanuel, you get the brothers together. All of you sisters go that way. All you sisters go to my right. All you sisters go right there where that room is to the right. Oh, don't worry, my brother's going to baptize me. They'll be all right. And all the brothers go to my left. Go back there and show them where the clothes are for the women. Yes, show them where the clothes are for the women. And I believe we brought some clothes right, down, too. We we need to find you that's on my baptismal committee, please, let's get the necessary slips and whatnot and move fast, please. Let's get to the back. I got some more coming. Come on. Come on, you that got the slips, I need you to get back there right away. Right away, right away, so we can get record. That's right, all you want to be baptized, come on, my God, come on. Come on. Yes, sir. All of you that want to be baptized, come on. All of you that want to be baptized the right way, come on. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're still a sinner. That's right, brother. You're not saved at all, never had been saved. Mm -hmm. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you got to go back. Amen. I got I had a Baptist preacher from Florida, uh, from Macon went down. I had a brother up here, another preacher from Florida. He went down. Come on. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you ain't never been saved. Mm -hmm. You might as well come on and get on God's side. Yeah. Everything might as well come on and get on God's side. Any more back there or any more in here? Now, let me educate you. Because some have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They've been baptized in Jesus' name. That's wrong. Because there's more than one Jesus in the Bible. Yes, it is. All right. You got Bar Jesus, All right. Justice Jesus, in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, you got Esau, which is the brother of Jacob. In Arabic, his name is pronounced Esau. But Esau, in English, the name is Jesus. Right. <laughs> you got Joshua. There are no J's in Hebrew, so it's pronounced Hashua. But when you say Hashua in English, that's Jesus. So you can't just be baptized in Jesus' name because there's more than one Jesus in the Bible. The apostles baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or they said Lord Jesus. Nobody in the Bible was just simply baptized Jesus' name. So if you simply be baptized only in the name Jesus, that's wrong. You got to go back. Amen. You better check up and see what you got now. Amen. Anybody else want to get it right? In the name of Jesus Christ, come on. Amen. If not, glory to God. Isn't this good? Yes, sir. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on. Anyone else? If not, all right, we'll turn you back in the hands of Bishop Williams. Come on back tomorrow. Don't go to your church tomorrow.